I now would like to invite Hanal for Yoga for Change. Thank you. So for this project, we have uh, analyzed the uh, impact of yoga curriculum on stress and mood level. So why particularly yoga? Most recent studies have, uh, on practice of yoga has been showing a positive effect on person's subtle changes in breathing, in breathing, heart rate, and heart rate and uh, uh, feelings in the body. So uh, working towards these changes could help individual uh, get their uh, work on their uh, stress and traumas. Uh, so they can help, uh, and therefore, the Yoga for Change has created a purpose-driven yoga curriculum to work on individual physical and emotional uh, needs of each population that they serve. They go to different facilities to teach yoga to different uh, to work on to help them overcome the traumas. The uh, four different populations that they're focusing on are incarcerated, substance abuse, veterans, and vulnerable youth. So for example, a John, uh, one of the students named John, um, he, t he took a uh, five session with VA MOVE uh, from last year, uh, starting from January, uh, July to this year, January. Um, in, in the beginning of, uh, for the veterans, and in the beginning of his session, he had uh, really, uh, he comes with a really high stress and negative mood. But over the time, he we see huge difference uh, in his stress level being zero and his mood level being 10 uh, at the best mood. Um, so we see through this prog uh, purpose-driven uh, yoga program, we see huge uh, if, uh, impact on person's individual, uh, individually emotional and physical health. So let's see their wicked problem. The uh, first wicked problem is to analyze the effect of the yoga. So over time, see the decrease in stress level and increase in mood level, as well as improvement in their uh, physical health, measuring the blood pressure and the heart rate. Another uh, wicked problem that we see that they gathered all the data on their note cards. So all the mood and stress level is self-reported, and also the heart rate uh, and blood pressure level is through the machine. So we help them out to create a uh, better and organizing, uh, better organizer uh, way to collect the data for the uh, future. So the uh, sample data that we received was 1,745 records. Uh, we had three different data availables, personal, subjective, and objective. Under the personal, we had gender, population, and the uh, uh, time of the session. Majority were a male and uh, under the incarcerated population, and well, majority of the individuals have taken class uh, in the afternoon than the morning. Under the subjective, we see mood level, stress level, and under the uh, objective, we see uh, blood pressure level and heart rate. So we've performed four types of analysis on this uh, data. Group level analysis to see uh, by, uh, by the gender, by population, and by the time of the session they, they take the class, see how overall how, they, how they're improving stress and the mood wise. Individual level, focusing on just one person and see, uh, because there, there are many students who take more than one session, to see their first initial session and the last session and how they grow uh, improving uh, stress-wise and the mood-wise. Longitudinal level uh, help us analyze the, the over time change in overall, uh, like all the uh, group level uh, uh, individually. And the clustering help us to analyze the pattern of pre-stress pre, uh, level uh, uh, mood level and the post-stress uh, level mood level. So here we see uh, stress before and after uh, by the gender. So we see uh, down, uh, it's decreasing uh, before and after the class. And here we see the mood, uh, so it's, it's increasing for all the genders uh, after the class. 
So we, here we see the systolic blood pressure. So it's, uh, once the individual come in, they, they are with a higher blood pressure. But uh, as, as they take this more session, they go closer to the ideal blood pressure. Here we have a diastolic blood pressure, so we see the same pattern. They come with a little bit higher and they go close to their ideal blood pressure. On the top we have stress before and after uh, by the population and we see decrease in the stress uh, uh, level all across the population. And on the bottom we see mood before and after uh, and we see increase in all across the uh, population. Group level in, uh, analysis had uh, records uh, by the uh, record time as well. So uh, we, uh, like I said, the afternoon uh, were higher individual. Uh, so the stress uh, level was decreasing um, and the mood level was increasing um, in the morning and afternoon session both. Here we have individual levels. So the per, uh, student named uh, Jim, he had taken 21 session and uh, we see mood change. So the higher the bar graph is higher, his mood is getting better, um, and getting a positive mood after the session. And on the bottom, we see stress change after the yoga. So, uh, and we see the dimension is negative. So it's, it's getting, um, um, neg uh, it's getting too closer to the zero um, after the session, the stress level. And next is longitudinal level, so now Greg will uh, continue from here. All right, so uh, we also wanted to look at, in addition to individual level, which Hanal explained with Jim, uh, we also wanted to look at how the people who took multiple sessions uh, varied across those sessions. So we have people who took one session all the way up to 10 or more sessions. Uh, and this graph shows their stress change across those sessions. So you can see the negative linear trend. Uh, that indicates that as people take more sessions, uh, their change in stress becomes more dramatic. So the effect of yoga is increasing over time on their stress levels. And this is mood, so you can see the same pattern, but in the opposite direction. So their mood is increasing over time. So the more sessions they take, the better their mood for these individuals. And in addition to the subjective measures, we also wanted to utilize the objective measure, measures that Catherine and Yoga for Change had the foresight to include. Uh, so this is the blood pressure measure. And as you can see, we have three groups. Uh, the red are those who have hypertension stage two. Uh, so those are people with extremely high blood pressure. They would likely need to be on medication for it. Uh, in the yellow there, we have hypertension stage one. And in the, in the green, we have those with ideal blood pressure. So keep in mind, this is before yoga. Now after yoga, we have no one in hypertension stage two. So everyone has either shifted to stage one hypertension or into ideal blood pressure. And to make this more dramatic for you, uh, so we have 29 individuals in hypertension stage two, 100 in stage one, and 55 with ideal blood pressure before yoga. And now after, what happens is those with hypertension stage one uh, go to the ideal blood pressure group and it doubles. So the number of people who have ideal blood pressure doubles after yoga. And then in addition, um, the people from hypertension stage two, they move into hypertension stage one. So we had a total of 29 people in stage two. So actually 23 of them went back into stage one hypertension, but amazingly six went from stage two hypertension to ideal blood pressure. Uh, so this, the <laughs> so the uh, objective measures along with the subjective measures of uh, mood and stress, uh, it really shows that yoga is helping uh, these four populations uh, in their um, in outcomes. So as we see, all the analysis result have been helpful to uh, each individual and taking this uh, yoga sessions are uh, creating a positive change with the trauma as well as improving their physical health in uh, terms of their blood pressure and heart rate. 
So improve, also uh, one of the wicked problems was the improving their data entry. So we have created a data entry form uh, for her to, uh, for Catherine to use uh, for future uh, data entry purposes. And adding uh, onto the future, ref uh, for future uh, references, uh, adding out uh, downstream outcomes would be also great to see how it's impacting the pers uh, uh, individual's person life, such as um, uh, recidivism and substance uh, abuse. And with that, uh, thank you. And I would like to invite uh, Yvonne for the uh, Mia Clinic project. <laughs>